How do folks? This here is the old mountain man talking at you from the back side of this here lake in the hills of Arkansas. Well, I got my buddy Little Bear with me down here. And I had a subscriber, Kurt, up in Missouri. He said, I want to see Little Bear. He said, I just love that dog. He is one of the best dogs in the world. And one thing Kurt loves about Little Bear is Little Bear, he likes to sing. Don't you, Little Bear? Hmm? Come here. You want to tune up? Hmm? Oh, okay. Yeah. Huh? And Kurt and Franny up there in Missouri, they came down here to see us, didn't they, Little Bear? And Kurt wanted to hear Little Bear sing a little bit on one of these videos. Okay, here we go. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's a character, that little bear. He's my buddy. Yeah, I've had you around, had you in my life for about nine years, almost ten. Yeah, yeah, buddy. I swear, he's a character, that little bear. He took me a while to get him to work. He'd do that howling thing. So I just want to start out this video with a special shout out to Kurt and Franny up there and. Up there in Missouri, they came to see us here a little while back, and they brought some food, and we cooked out here under the carport because it was a rainy day, and you know, I had all this set up for a rainy day shoot because earlier today it was cloudy and it was sprinkling, and I thought, well, shoot, I'll go ahead and shoot under the carport because you know, it, moving everything out there, getting all the settings on the webcam right, uh, it can be a pain in the butt. I really do need to shoot more videos though. Uh, yeah, but this video mainly is about fire steels. And as you can see, I got a box back here and I got my little, got my buddy. He will, he just wants to get all the attention that he can get, huh? Isn't that right? Yeah, he says, hey folks, somebody buy a fire steel so I can get a new chew toy. He's been gnawing on the same tennis balls and 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 rawhide for a while. He doesn't go through things that much, but oh boy, that extra money gets some grub for us both, and maybe a little a little something to put away in for a rainy day for the zombie apocalypse. Yeah, I say zombie apocalypse. I don't really believe in dead people getting up out the ground, walking around, not unless there's some kind of supernatural divine intervention that goes on there. Isn't that right, little bear? So the only people we care about getting up out of the ground be, oh, be us if we had to come back. Of course, that don't happen. Anyway, uh, I know what I forgot. I forgot the book. See, that has the exact number of fire steels I got in this box. So I do believe I have about 45 of these half inch by five inch fire steels. And then these others over here is the four by three eighths and if you notice, let's see if I can get that up there. Hey, well, yeah, there it is. A little gray specks all over it. That's magnesium dust. I put magnesium dust on the, on the fire steels because if they sit around too long without some kind of protection, uh, they begin to disintegrate. And I've got my fire steel rubber banded to a piece of magnesium. And, that's what magnesium does. One of the little known things that magnesium does is protect metal. Of course, any engineer out there that's uh, done any work on sea walls or underwater structures on the rivers, on the river system, they know this. 
because this here's Corps of Engineers scrap. It's old, obsolete, outdated, and I was very blessed to have someone uh, make a trade with me for some ammo here a while back. You know, my brother used to work on the Arkansas River. Uh, he's medically retired now. Uh, he made 28 successful jumps with the over there and you know jumping out of perfectly good airplanes over in the desert and it really screwed his legs and hips and everything up and he's medically retired from the Corps of Engineers now. And God bless him he done his part for our country and he went on to work on the river out there which helped me out a whole lot. I was able to get this scrap you know, taking up room in the storage shed and he said, yeah, you know, I've already talked to the boss and the boss said, okay, so there you have it. And I traded him ammo and different uh, survival supplies and this and that and what have you that he liked or wanted and got some magnesium. I got it in the uh, three quarter and one inch Let's see, this is half, and then I got three quarter inch anode rod, and yeah, it's got a steel piece, a steel pin running all the way through the length of it. Of course, you can probably see that little dot right there. That's the steel pin. It's not real big, but they used to run electricity through that, and that would help attract the uh, the any salts or other corrosive minerals to the magnesium protecting the steel. But they don't use that anymore. They found out it's not necessary that the magnesium naturally attracts that stuff. So now this stuff's outdated and obsolete. And this was a little more expensive to produce than, uh, than the regular magnesium anode. Uh, let me see here. I brought my coffee out here, about half a cup of coffee. Let's see, I'm gonna show y'all a little something here. I don't know if that, if that uh, camera's gonna pick up when that flame ignites, but I'm gonna start it with <coughs> My ferro rod or fire steel, ferrocerium rod, fire steel, you know, whichever name you want to call it, it don't matter, it's all the same. Alright, got the gas going. Yeah, there we go. I don't even see that blue flame in this light. Now listen there, I set that that steel cup on that burner without them little supports and this is my modified outfit, immediately starts heating up. That hot burner transfers that heat immediately to that steel cup. And it's not a difficult thing, you just get you a, an old one burner stove that doesn't have uh, any more use pull that burner off of there and do the modifications it's not a difficult thing and it works perfectly saves all kinds of fuel because you get your your liquids heated up quicker now I was in there watching a uh, EMP series on YouTube a while ago and the man that made that EMP series it's like a grid down story 31 chapters in that uh, in that series and let me see if I can get the name of this channel right I don't know how to pronounce it so I'll just spell it BZA RZA GZA. Yeah, there's a space in between those each of the sequence of three 
three letters there. So I'll put his channel link down below and uh, you can find the playlist there. And I, yeah, as long as you're not squeamish or don't like, uh, as long as you can get by without. You know, if you can tolerate a cuss word or two, like you see here, to see in my damn video sometimes, well, hell, you'll be all right. Your feelings will heal up. There's some damn good lessons to be learned in those stories that people tell in these these survival series, these uh, these MP series, or grid down, or invasion uh, stories that people tell. And it, you know, it's fiction, of course, but it could happen. You know, possibly. And that's why people prep. And that's why, you know, a sustainable, a, re, well, a resource for building fires like these fire steels, you know, sooner or later, big lighters run out. Sooner or later, matches run out. Uh, where can you always count on a nine volt, little square nine volt battery to start some steel wool? There's a whole world of ways to start a fire, I know. But this is how I make my bread and butter money. Yeah, in the middle of the month. Oh, and for those, yeah, I've told y'all in the past, I drew something like 90-something dollars in food stamps. That's gone. That's gone. I quit it. And, uh, I just, they, they made some new changes, and they cut them down to where it wasn't even helping anymore. So I'm depending more and more on sales of the fire steels and fire building packages more now than ever and I want to thank you for Backcountry Preps I'll send out a thank you to Backcountry Preps for uh, his shout out in his latest video whenever he's enjoying the evening and he's out there and he's shooting video in the dark showing off that that fire he built with a fire building kit that I sold to him and you know he got around to opening it up and he seen the extras I put in there and I do that sometimes whenever it's my way of thanking people for placing an order throwing in a few extra goodies maybe some a knife or a sharpening stone or some uh, old P38 can openers or you know just whatever I can get that is, it's not going to be too much on the overhead cost but it's sure gonna you know be a pleasant surprise when people open that package up and they see that they got more than what they um, what they ordered see if I can get a drink off of this without burning my dang mouth oh boy that was good I ain't quit smoking yet. Down to my last little bit of tobacco. I mean, really, I'm paying forty-five eighty for, uh, or I was. I didn't buy no tobacco this month. I said I'm gonna put that money somewhere else. I put in orders for some upgrades for the Mossberg 590, and yeah, you know, uh, nine-round tube of the magazine the spring, the follower, and let's see, a barrel. Ordered a barrel from eBay, I gotta send it back. Should have known better. Turns out it was made in China. My Mossberg's made in America. My apologies to the folks in China, no insult meant no insult implied because but I you know with an American made shotgun I gotta have American made parts it's just my one of my little quirks apologies to any of my viewers or subscribers in China that's you know just don't please don't take offense to what I said, I don't mean any insult by it, as I said before, I'm just...
just gotta have what I gotta have for my for my firearms. I did own a Narenko 22 at one time, and it was a dang fine little shooter. But I had to I had to sell it to get some money for an emergency in the family. Back whenever I was married, I was out of work. Had to sell my little Narenko 22 to get food for the kids. Oh yeah, and that woman I was married to. Just, yeah, I allowed her to eat after the kids ate. She just didn't get that though. I don't know. She, she's a strange woman in a way. Strange. You know. <coughs> What's you doing, sassy? <laughs> Little sass ass. Little sassy. And sassy too. Little pooch over here. She's the little rat killer. She's the rat killer. She ain't no bigger than a minute. Just big as a corn nubbin. But by golly, she's feisty for about a 14 or 15 year old pooch. Yeah, she's, she bounces around here like a little pup. Don't you sass ass? She said, but I don't do it needlessly. Whenever there's food, oh yeah, she's like a spring-loaded jackrabbit. She's all over the place. Yeah. Boy, howdy, I don't know how I'm going to behave once that little dab of tobacco's gone. Again, there, that's what's left. You know, it's just, just enough to cover the bottom of the can. Yeah. Whenever that's gone... Ugh. Yeah, it's a pain in the butt. And yeah, I'm sitting there thinking about the whole situation with being addicted to smoking. It was peer pressure that got me inhaling tobacco smoke anyway. Yeah, and back whenever I was a kid, people was plain spoken and outright. And these kids, you know, that I was hanging with wasn't exactly the greatest because. Yeah, I wasn't exactly well accepted in that town where I lived in Oklahoma. Coming from a single parent family and all in the 1970s, that was sort of a strange new concept to a bunch of backward people. Now, you'd be surprised at how many backward people, backward minded people there still are in this world today. I swear. This makes me want to ease my nerves with a cigarette. Think about all that mess. Now I've cut back, I've had what four cigarettes since 6.30 this morning this is my fifth and I don't know the addictive personality is something that I am afflicted with and in my mind there's justification and oh well you're only smoking five cigarettes you know, in so many hours, uh, you, you know, you can, you can maintain the habit and still live a long time. But no, I've got to give up this damn tobacco. Otherwise, uh, I dread to think what the health results is going to be if I don't. Yeah, uh, <coughs> and I am an edgy person without tobacco and that's not a justification that's just a fact um two packs a day put my old daddy in the grave put old put old mountain man senior in the grave two packs on Marlboro a day lord god almighty two pack habit for 30 years you know, he went from one pack a day all the way to two packs a day. Of course, he was doing his thing, working in factories and such. Whenever he finally settled down, 
with his third wife. Still looking for the woman that's going to be my third wife. Hopefully not my third ex. The one that's going to be with me the rest of my days or rest of her days whichever comes first i want to live to 120 that's what i want to live to and won't be able to do that pulling that smoke down my lungs goodness gracious it's been all over the place with this video giving a shout out to some good people in missouri and talking about fire steel sales and uh, I got bars of magnesium, I uh, got uh, the round, the cylindrical magnesium anode, and shoot, I remember I sent one old boy home with a big old slab of magnesium because he brought me a bunch of stuff over here from Oklahoma. Mr. Jerry Pruitt, the fellow that uh, had given me that bowl, that recurve bowl that I was testing the Chinese broadhead. See, right there is a good product from China. Is that those stainless, those uh, carbon steel, um, solid steel Chinese broadheads. Well, those are some mean outfits. And in a shit hit the fan situation, I imagine they would just cut clean through whatever you need them to. Whether that be a zombie, uh, and we all know a zombie is a metaphor for the unprepared that want to try to take what you got. And I got 60 of those. I got a good, I got a decent supply of crossbow bolts, and that sucker, that crossbow, I put it together finally, and it is one powerful booger, but it is a short range weapon, I've come to find out. Uh, but it'd be pretty good backup, pretty good uh, weapon to, uh, yeah, just take out someone in the dark, put a bolt through their lungs, man got a hole in his lungs, he won't be able to holler too damn loud, too round, the shock of it hitting him, just the impact, and then you, if it, stops and he sees a them arrow sticking through he ain't going to be wanting to holler or scream or nothing his lungs be too busy fill that one lung be too busy filling up with blood you know seemed like that was a familiar conversation but you know unless you got experience in, in such matters unless you've done it you I've seen too much and done even more in my life than most people even think about. I've lived my life, I've settled down, I've got, I'm living in a nice home now, this three bedroom home in Central Air. The only bad thing is the bills are getting to me. It's eating up a lot of money and so that's why I need to get some of these fire steels sold yeah I got a, quite a number of them I'm thinking right around 60 of these three three eighths diameter by four inch long and then I got like I said about 45 of these I don't have much deer antler to work with on the half inch by five inch but I will make my best effort to fill any orders for those but hell uh, with the fire steels that are requested for uh, with a wooden handle I can burn designs in them coat them with two ton epoxy resin and no two ton epoxy resin is not like varnish if it gets wet it is going to hold uh, I started this channel with this exact same fire steel right here except it had an orange handle at the time and it is much slimmer in diameter originally down here than one of these 3 8 diameter it's about half that size 
and I've been using this thing for what well, going on five years now you know I've just celebrated four years on YouTube celebrated it oh uh, <laughs> but yeah I I use the epoxy resin you see that little shine over here on the on that epoxy resin use that I use the same products that I sell <laughs> ain't that a kick in the butt and oh heaven help me I just I gotta do it right I gotta do it right every time otherwise I got a return you know I started getting people returning fire steels for repair and replacement and thanks to someone setting my mind to thinking why do they turn why do the fire steels turn loose from the handle every time it's that black coating so I'll take about that much of the fire steel and I'll take a little hacksaw and I'll go all the way around make my mark and then scrape all that off and set it in there with that and maybe take that hacksaw and cut some little notches and grooves in there so that epoxy resin has something to hold on to <coughs> any good paint and body man will tell you you got to take that metal down to the get it get that paint off there that surface off off that all that surface crud off of there in order to get a primer to hold and then the primer's on there and then you got the paint and it's the same way with bondo you got to get all that all that paint and old primer and such off there get it down to the bare metal and start start your work start your bondo work and Bondo, that's some touchy stuff. I once worked for a man at Scott's Paint and Body over on 59 Highway years ago when I was about 18 year old, 19 year old. Yeah, I was about 18. It was just before I started working in the dang chicken plant. Very first job was a chicken plant. Ugh. But I hung in there as long as I could. I hung in there as long as I could, but it was this, the oddest thing. They put me on live hang, and that wasn't odd until those live chickens, the, one, the ones coming down the belt, they were nice and calm, but whenever you grabbed them and you hang them in these, these wire hangers, their feet, hang their feet in the wire hangers, they start flopping around and squawking. And it was a psychological thing. I started the, all that squawking and everything turned into something else. It was some kind of mind fuck, I guess, that happened to me. It, it, it's going to sound silly, but the damn chicken started sounding like they were saying, help me, help me, help me. I'm like, oh, my God. You know, chickens don't talk. But you get a whole shitload of animals squawking all at one time and you feel bad, of, you almost feel bad about it doing that job and sympathy, the sympathy combined with the squawking and crap, it just played on my brain. I had to get away from it. I ended up quitting because of that. But I went right to work in the hay fields and went right to work splitting and cutting wood out there in the country. Did all I could to earn an honest dollar. Been working most all my life one way or another. Now I'm trying to work through YouTube. And I know people want to people wanna be entertained whenever they watch videos. People want to be entertained. They want to learn something or what have you. They don't want sales pitches coming at them all the time. Well, I'm sorry, but that's part of my life. That's part of my channel. My channel's part of my life. My videos are little parts of my life. And, you know, that's just it. People have been subscribed to me so long know that I'm I've been suffered a workplace injury that forced me out of the workforce and uh, trying to pull myself up by the proverbial bootstraps trying to get things done.
and it ain't easy. It ain't easy at all. Here a while back, I thought, well, shoot, what am I going to do with that? You know, I had that little dab of food stamps going, and I was able to put some food in the freezer. I was thinking, well, am I going to have to swallow my pride and go back to church for some donation or something? Or No, oh, my pride's taken a beating over the last 20 years or so. It just, yeah. Uh, last well, 25 years it's one hell of a damn thing you do your level best be a man you know work be the breadwinner yeah and just something that's real difficult for me to have to deal with talking with an eBay representative today and I found out that they only charge 10 percent 10 cents on the dollar for uh, like if I sold a $50 item on eBay they get five dollars and PayPal's got their service fee certain percentage find out what that is I may just open up an eBay store I may just start selling from the same account or open up a business account. <coughs> it's one heck of a thing, though. You know, selling on eBay, that's all about selling. You know, YouTube, it's crap shoot what these videos would be about. I don't even know what I'm going to name this video. And we up almost to 32 minutes. Oh, my God. Well, I'm known for my long videos. gonna take a while to upload well I hope I haven't bored y'all too awful much I hope I really sincerely hope I get to make some sales this month this next week something right here off through YouTube you can contact me through the business email address yeah go to my channel uh, if you've been on, if you know how to navigate YouTube well enough to get to this video, then you know how to get to my channel. Most, most people subscribe because of the, either a video or just sub hit the subscribe, subscribe button on my, my channel. I'm not asking for any more subscribers. I've got too many already. But I want to thank the new people that have shown an interest in my videos and you know, thank all my new subscribers. Uh, I got a price list in my documents on my computer. I can get that out to you by way of email. I was thinking about posting the price list in the uh, video description of this video like I did in the, the description of the very first video, Details and Demonstration of the Ferrocerium fire starting rod. You know. Well this that going see is getting hot. I got a steel chair here. <laughs> Kinda makes me think about that what uh backcountry prep said. Uh call out the rubber maid squad, beat them Antifa people to death with a with a rubber lawn chair, plastic lawn chair. Well backcountry preps, I tell you you whop somebody with this here old steel chair. Yeah, <laughs> it won't take too many whacks to knock them senseless. You catch them just right, you get the job done with one stroke. Lord God Almighty. I'm just not too sure about that the damn tobacco. I know I've got to give it up. But it's going to be a big thing. I've got to find, you know, maybe a replacement for it. Jelly beans or something. That's what Ronald Reagan did when he quit smoking. Start eating jelly beans. I ain't got that many teeth left. I don't know, hard candy maybe? Some of them uh, peppermint candies or some dang thing. I don't know. You know, sugar is just not too good for you anyway. It feeds cancer. I got to remember that. You know, sugar feeds cancer. And 
Hell, I had my troubles with that, and then that Hoxie's formula took care of it. I don't eat much sugar. But anyway, I'm going off on a different subject, and this video is long enough. I'm going to get off of here, and I got to get to cooking supper. I got some bone soup cooking from, you know, some beef knuckle bones in a cast iron pot. I got to get a fire going back here and get that get that going. And then whenever the, the bones are just cooked so much, I start adding vegetables, and then, of course, the bones go to Little Bear and Sassy, too. And... They just love that. Oh boy. Well, at any rate, folks, I'm gonna get off here and get back to get back to my grub, get back to my chores, and uh, y'all take care of yourselves. Be good to yourselves. Be good to each other. I always say that, and I mean it. This world is bad enough as it is. We need some more good things happening. The kind of Knock back the badness that's going on. And talk to y'all later. Take care now. So Mountain Man is signing off from the backside of this here lake in the hills of Arkansas. Y'all have a good evening, good morning, good night, whichever it is in your part of the world, and God bless.